الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله إمام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين الذي بعث إلى الأحمر والأسود والذي تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سلك طريقهم وسار على نهجهم ودعا بدعوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My beloved brothers and sisters, every time we get a chance to speak to one another and to remind one another about goodness, the first point that we should be raising is the development of the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is always important for us to build this relationship with Allah. It is known as taqwallahi. If you notice in the Quran, Every time Allah says, Ittaqullah, which means develop the relationship with Allah, be conscious of Allah, be fearful of His punishment and hopeful in His mercy. That is part of the meaning of taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this beautiful relationship with Him such that when we fulfill the instructions, we do so with pleasure, with happiness, with great zeal, and when we stay away from the prohibitions that make him angry, we do so also out of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, when Bilal ibn Rabah radiyallahu anhu at the beginning of Islam was being tortured, he was being dragged in the hot sand on the hot stones and he was being harmed. He kept on repeating, Ahadun Ahad, I'm sure we have heard that. At that juncture, he had no idea what the future held, but he had hope in the mercy of Allah. He did not know that a day will come when he will be given the honor of calling out the Adhan in the same Mecca, in the same Masjid, on the same Kaaba in the vicinity of which he was being punished and penalized. At that juncture, right at the beginning, he didn't give up, but he knew that Allah has a better plan. When victory came, it came sweeter than he expected it. When Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam together with a few were being persecuted in Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. Subhanallah. The companions had conviction and hope in the mercy of Allah, but they didn't know exactly how Allah had planned the victory. That victory was sweeter and better than they had ever imagined. When Musa alayhi salatu was salam was faced with the Pharaoh, the destruction of the Pharaoh and he used to kill the boys and he used to commit and perpetrate the most heinous of crimes. They didn't know exactly in what shape the victory would come or when it would come, but they knew that Allah had promised them ultimate victory. They continued to have hope in the mercy of Allah. And this is why when they prayed to Allah to say, Oh Allah, when is this victory going to come? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to the call of Musa alayhi salam and Harun, Moses and Aaron, may peace be upon them. قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا فَاسْتَقِيمَا وَلَا we have indeed answered your prayer. So now we want you to be steadfast. 
The mercy of Allah, the help of Allah comes to those who are steadfast. But their journey to developing the closeness with Allah at times has in it the challenges of this world. We should never lose hope, my brothers and sisters. Remain steadfast. No matter what we are going through, it will never be worse than what Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu went through. Did victory not come to him? Did he not see days he didn't even imagine he would see? We cannot have gone through worse than what the Prophet Musa alayhi salam went through. Did he not see victory? And Allah tells him, your dua has been answered. It has been answered. Yet, the destruction of the Pharaoh only came years later. In the interim, Allah told him, do you know what? Be steadfast, you and your brother. Don't lose focus. My brothers and sisters, the challenges you have on earth should bring you closer to Allah and not take you further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever hardship, be it a financial hardship, be it a difficulty in your workplace or with your health, with your family, no matter what it may be, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. It must not take you away from Allah. It must bring you closer. Allah told those whom he loves, who have been through more than anything you will ever go through. Allah told them, don't worry, we know. Subhanallah, you just be steadfast. We will take care of the rest. When the time is right, you will taste the sweetest of victory in a, man, in a manner that you didn't even imagine. Many times we look at things that happen to us that seem to be negative. We don't even realize those are sometimes the most positive things that have ever happened to our lives. Take a look at any crisis, any problem that has happened within the life of a believer. If you see, you will find the pearls within that problem. You will find the goodness within that issue on a broader scale within a period of time. You will see the light if you remain steadfast. So Allah tells Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, don't follow the path of those who don't know. Don't follow the path of those who don't know. You remain steadfast. As for those who don't know, they follow the path of transgression. They become angry. They start questioning Allah. I know of people who've lost their children. I know of people who don't have children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for one and all. Remain steadfast. You are not the first person with that problem. There are billions of others who have had the same problem in the past and even worse. But the difference is they were steadfast. They never lost hope. They died with hope and ultimately the victory that they got with Jannatul Firdaus was far greater and sweeter than any difficulty and hardship they went through during this life. What's the worst thing that can happen to me? In fact, it is the best thing that could happen. From a worldly perspective, we say it's the worst. But from a heavenly perspective, it's the best. What is it? Die. If I were to die because of my sickness, my problem, my illness, and may Allah protect us all, if you were terminally ill with cancer or whatever it may be, may Allah grant you shifa through his miracle. Part of the mercy of Allah is that he will take you away and ultimately you will go to Jannah. We always tell people you want to go to Jannah, they say yes. You want to die, they say no. So how are you going to go to Jannah? Subhanallah. So Allah says, hang on, we know if you die with hope, ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I will treat every one of my slaves according to how he perceives me. You remember the mercy of Allah. You have hope in the mercy of Allah, in the forgiveness of Allah. Allah will treat you with that hope, with that mercy, with that forgiveness. But if you think no way, Allah is not going to have mercy on me. He, that is an insult to Allah because he says he is Ra'ufun, Rahimun, Rahmanun, Wadudun, Ghaffarun, etc, etc. Forgiving, most merciful, most compassionate, etc, etc. And you are saying, no, you are not. What type of an insult is that against Allah? May Allah grant us that beautiful hope in his mercy. Look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They told him bad things. They said evil things. They plotted against him. They tried to kill him. They tried to do whatever. They didn't succeed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ 
وكم من الساجدين واعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين we know that the statements they are uttering, the bad words they are saying are hurting you. We know that they are hurtful words. Your heart is being narrowed, your chest, sorry, your chest is being narrowed because of the hurtful words that they are saying. We know that. What is the solution? Sabbih bihamdi rabbik. Declare the praise and glory of your Lord. Declare it. Someone swore you. You say, Alhamdulillah. Is it possible? The problem with us, when someone swears us, we don't know the guidance. We don't even have hope in the mercy of Allah. We swear them back with a double swear word. Subhanallah. We swear them back. They called us one animal. We called them 10 animals. What, what was the difference? Subhanallah. It just shows our vocabulary is a little bit wider and broader than theirs. That's not what a mu'min is. Someone swears you and you can smile. And you can say, Oh Allah, guide him. He doesn't know. That is a true believer. You have hope. You are living with a smile on your face. You don't need to get angry. Anger will destroy you. It will destroy your health. It will destroy your relationships. You'll end up oppressing your children and your family members without realizing it's because someone said something to me today and I didn't like it. I vented it on those I love the most. So you have a problem now at home. Because of what? You didn't realize what it was. But if you learn to let go and have hope in the mercy of Allah, perhaps Allah will guide this person. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, there are so many examples of people who caused and committed blasphemy against Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah guided them to the deen and they came through, subhanallah, in such a manner that nobody would have imagined this victory. Even in our own lives, I can give you so many examples of so those people, you might even know some of them. But this has been from the very beginning. So why is it that I get angry and upset when Allah Himself knows people who blaspheme Him, at times He guides them and He brings them to the deen. Take a look at Khalid ibn al-Walid ibn al-Mughira radiallahu anhuma. Take a look at this man. He says, there is no place on my body without the mark of a weapon. And yet he didn't die in the battlefield. And prior to Islam, he caused a lot of harm to the Muslims. But there was hope in the mercy of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad said, Ma mithlu Khalidin yajhalul Islam. A man with the brain of Khalid ibn al Walid, so intelligent, so powerful, he cannot be ignorant of the fact that Islam is the true religion. Subhanallah. The dua, what happened? This man came through. Shocking. Everyone was shocked. Prior to that, there were other shocks, but they knew the Sahaba radiallahu anhum knew, don't underestimate the mercy of Allah. The mercy of Allah, Allah says, wa rahmati wa si'at kulla The mercy of Allah, absolutely broad. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, absolutely broad. It has encompassed everything. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us. My brothers, my sisters, without lengthening much, I wish to remind you of something very interesting. The difficulties can be divided into many different categories. But two main categories, those in this world and those of the hereafter. I promise you the difficulties of this world, if you manage them correctly as a believer, you will never have difficulties in the hereafter. Some people who don't manage their difficulties and hardships in this world properly, Allah speaks about them by saying, خَسِرَ dunya wal akhirah, ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ They have lost this world and they have also lost the afterlife. That is indeed a clear cut loss. Would you like to be from among those? No. So don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter what you've done, don't let shaitan bog you down. But ask yourself a question. In the same way that I don't like people to do wrong to me, do I do wrong to others? That's a very powerful question. Because many people want to be protected from harm, but they don't protect others from their own harm. 
And this is why the Prophet ﷺ on more than one occasion has spoken about how a true Muslim is he who doesn't use his tongue or his hands to harm anyone. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. And in another narration, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Nasu. One narration actually says a Muslim is the one whom the other people are saved from the evil of his tongue or his hand, which means no verbal abuse and no physical abuse. One narration speaks of the Muslims protecting the Muslimin in that way, making sure you don't harm. And the other one speaks about mankind at large. And there are verses of the Quran that speak about mankind at large. There are other narrations that speak about mankind and la at large. لا يرحم الله من لا يرحم الناس. Allah does not have mercy on the one who doesn't have mercy on the, the rest of the people. Are you a merciful servant of Allah? Are you really a merciful servant of Allah? Do you have mercy in your home, with your children, with your spouses, with your daughters, with your brothers and sisters? If you would like the mercy of Allah, you need to show the quality of mercy at least to others. Many of us do not have a relationship with our own children. A young boy came to me a few moments ago in this masjid and told me, I have a question to ask you. And I told him, this is not a Q&A session. He says, there are five minutes remaining. I said, no problem. What is the question? Perhaps life and death. He said, you know, I want to choose a certain field and my father, my mother want me to choose a certain field and I really don't want the field they want. I am so interested in something else. What do I do? At that juncture, I wished I had a small tablet I could give him so that suddenly his problem would be solved, but that's not possible. What can I say? Develop a relationship with your parents, talk to them, talk to them again, convince them, tell them I'm not keen on this and that. And my beloved parents, listen to your children. Every day we have hundreds of young girls telling us, my father is forcing me to marry my cousin. Every day. And we have hundreds of divorces every day telling us that I didn't want to marry the person I married. I was in love with someone else. Astaghfirullah, I am not condoning what they may have done, but I'm telling the parents something is wrong with the way you brought up your children. Either you were too hard and you didn't understand how to communicate with your children and you don't even understand the rights that Allah gave you and what he did not give you. How can you impose? How would you like it if five years down the line, your wife tells you, I never wanted to marry you. I was in love with the neighbor. And you know what? My father forced me to marry you. How would you feel? This is a difficulty and a great hardship. We need to have hope in the mercy of Allah. Let the children communicate with you. If what they want is not haram, facilitate it for them. My brothers and sisters, if Allah allowed it, who are you to disallow it? What type of a big deal do you really think you are? Do you really think that Allah told you these children are your ownership? Like you own money? Even the money you don't own, al malu malullah. The children belong to Allah. Allah gave them to you temporarily just to see what you would do. Are you going to do what we asked you to do or you're going to do what your whims and fancies want? Many of us do what our whims and fancies want. Are you ready to follow the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he tells you, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ When someone comes to you with a proposal, you study his akhlaq and his deen. If it's okay, let it happen. Subhanallah. On condition that they both would like to do it, right? On condition that they both are interested, let it happen. With us, no, 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 you can't. When you were five years old, I promised you to our, to my brother's son, it's over. You cannot let that happen. Five years we are living now in this dunya, in this world. You have created a disaster, not only for yourself, but for your future generations. May Allah protect us. I am not condoning children to go and do their own thing. My beloved children, you must involve your parents in your lives. In the big decisions you have to make, those are your parents. They've taken care of you. They've loved you. They've brought you up. You must involve them. But my beloved parents, learn to understand a little bit. And understand, don't create hardship for people. Allah will create hardship for you in the dunya and in the akhirah. When you create ease for someone, Allah will create ease for you. So as much as we would like to have hope in the mercy of Allah, 
Through our difficulties in this dunya, we need to make sure we are not the point of suffering of someone else. Remember that. Sometimes at your workplace, you are a boss. So what you do is you start oppressing the people. You don't greet them. You don't talk to them. You, don't, you, you treat them as though they are not human. If that is the case, you are not going to go very far. Allah will catch you. Change your attitude. What is it costing you to smile, to greet the man who's cleaning the street? The other day I saw a clip online of a man who was cleaning the street and they got him reciting the Quran so melodiously that it would put me to shame also. Subhanallah. Circumstances have driven such a pious person for halal sustenance to clean the street to earn a, a few coins. Yet his qualification with Allah is higher than almost the entire masjid. And people don't want to greet him. People don't want to talk to him. People look at him and they throw zibala, they throw dirt on him to say, you clean it, take it. And they don't realize he may be a friend of Allah. Allahu Akbar. He may be a friend of Allah. Had you greeted him, the bonus was yours, not his. Allahu Akbar. Learn to greet people. You don't know who is closer to Allah. We judge people based on material items. The man, the perfume smelled nice. Salamu alaikum. That was salam to the Ud. Salamu alaikum. That was salam to the cufflinks and to the pen and to the car. The same man, if he were to come with tatty clothing, we would not even say wa alaikum as salam if he greeted. And we want hope in the mercy of Allah. We are not having mercy on others. We don't even acknowledge people. My brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. What beautiful lessons we have from the struggles of not only the companions of the Prophet ﷺ or the Prophet ﷺ himself, but even from the previous prophets. Go and look at their lives. Each one of them struggled. Because Allah chose that for them. Had Allah wanted, he would not have let it happen. But the lesson was for us. Their struggles drew them closer to Allah. Our struggles sometimes draw us away from the mercy of Allah. We lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And on top of that, our struggles are such that we have made others struggle as a result of our existence on earth. If that is the case, how do you expect solutions to the difficulties that you are going through when you, your problem, when you yourself are the source of difficulties and problems against others? May Allah help me firstly to become a better person. And then all of us, may Allah help us to become a better person. If you walk out of this masjid today and you have made a firm intention that I'm going to be a much better person in my character, in my relationship with Allah, we have succeeded by the will of Allah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihima min al-ayati wa al-hikmah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisairi al-muslimina fa astaghfiruhu innahu jawadun kareem.